tonight, whatever happened, um, where have all the cash points gone? Uh, the number of cash points in Britain has been in free fall since 2015. Back then, just eight years ago, there were more than 70,000 free ATMs in the UK. At the end of last year, we'd lost more than 40% of those, leaving us with just over 39,000. And that's despite the number of cash withdrawals increasing by nearly 20%. Now, this goes hand in hand with the death of the High Street Bank as more and more branches close. So is the UK sleepwalking into a cashless society? And what happens to those left behind if it does? Victoria Innes has been to Windsor, where banks and cash points are almost extinct. Next year, one of these notes will feature the king's face on it. But chances are you won't be able to get your hands on one just yards from where he lives. That's because Windsor now has just one 24-hour cash point. Despite being home to the UK's most popular tourist attraction, welcoming six million visitors every year, banks in Windsor keep closing and it's now classed as a cash desert. People, you know, older people, are not online doing their banking and this sort of thing. Um, I just think it's very wrong. Petitions are going around at the moment to, to make, the, um, make society not, no longer cashless because it has to stop. My business bank was in Windsor, my personal bank's in Windsor, my daughter's bank, and now we have to go to Staines or Slough or whatever, which to go to the bank is a massive pain. I went to Barclays Bank in Windsor uh, on the day it closed actually, on Wednesday morning um, and that was the last time I'll go and the first time I went was about 40 years ago. Back in June this local arts centre took the decision to go cashless because with branches closing it was becoming too costly to do anything else. Nearly all of the banks have closed. I think there's one remaining. Um, so that has an impact on, um, I suppose, local transactions, what people are coming into the town to do. Operating cash is a cost. You know, you've got overheads of counting it and securing it and paying it in. If we have cash, we now need to take it to Slough to pay it into our bank. Um, so that added up to making the move. While cashless payments have risen from 45% a decade ago, to 85% now, cash is still vital for millions of people and a lack of it is having a devastating effect. It feeds into a cycle where people just feel like they're being dehumanised because there are so few services are in person these days, everybody wants you to go online and if you're not online it's a huge disadvantage and it can lead to isolation and it has really serious consequences for people's health and well-being. As of June, new rules for banks mean those living in towns should be within a mile of a cash machine that doesn't charge fees. But as more and more disappear, campaigners are accusing them of waging a war on cash to force customers to switch to card payments and online services, an act they say must be stopped. The problem for people here, though, is whether it's already too late. Victoria Innes, Talk TV. Let's pick this up with John Howells. He's chief executive of the UK's Link ATM network. Welcome, John. Uh, let's, can we start with your hey, reaction you. to the, the, the Windsor situation, a town with just one 24-hour cash point? Well, it's, it's an excellent example of the problem we've got in the UK. Of course, Windsor should have branches and free ATMs. It's got 30,000 people, hundreds and hundreds of shops. And you could see from the shot, the shot in your report, it's teeming with people uh, and we are definitely moving to losing to using less cash in the UK for payments. But we're nowhere near ready to go cashless. We've got at least five million people who rely on cash. That's getting on to 10 percent of the population. And pretty much all of us use cash in our day to day lives at some point. So we need to protect cash. We're not ready to go cashless yet. And the rules that the government has just brought in, I think, are just in the nick of time. I'm hoping they're going to mean that places like Windsor, who've lost many ATMs, many branches, don't lose what they need, which is free ATMs uh, and at least one full service branch in the middle of town. So, so those rules that the government ha have introduced, we'll, we'll take the example of, of Windsor. It's hard to see I mean, I, didn't get a t I can't get a tape measure out and, and measure how many people per... per, per um, if there's only the one, 
you, you do think, well, so are the banks going to turn around and say, oh, well, fair enough, we'll start putting them back in? Yeah, you, you, need, you need to, if you go to Windsor or any other major town, you don't need to um, be, be, be do some major scientific exercise to work out where it is. It needs to be in the middle of town, not on the outskirts. The ATM needs to be free and available for, if not 24 hours, pretty much all the day so that people, whether it's first thing in the morning or coming out of a restaurant, can get cash. And you need to have a branch where you can pay in and take out cash because it's not just about consumers, it's about shops. Uh, and we've been lobbying for these new rules for some time. I'm also part of the Financial Inclusion Commission, which has been lobbying very hard to protect uh, cash because we've got so many people who rely on it. And thank goodness the rules the government has brought in with cross-party party support have come in just in the nick of time. Because once you lose the ATMs and the branches, it's 10 times harder to put them back. And I'm hoping these new rules, which uh, uh, force the banks, enable the banks to work together uh, to keep infrastructure in places like Windsor and other towns, I think they're just in the nick of time and should keep cash going for 5, 10, 15 years, which is what we need before we're ready to go digital. Who's worst affected then when the, the cash machines disappear? Well, it, 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 it's a complete myth to assume it's just um, the elderly and, uh, and less well off. Yes, that is true. But if you go to somewhere like Windsor, um, you'll see there's a hugely... Uh, a hugely wealthy population, as well as uh, as well as the less well off, who are relying on cash. And if you go to um, any part of the, the the area around London, you'll find those kind of conurbations. But you'll equally find if you go to the poorer parts of Liverpool or Birmingham, you've got cash users. So it's a huge spread of society who rely on cash, from the poor to the elderly to just people who don't want to use apps and don't feel comfortable. We but, need to protect cash. We're not ready to go cash. Instead. Right, uh, but we know that banks aren't keen on cash. It's bulky, it's dangerous to, to move around, it's just generally uh, inconvenient. They seem to regard customers as an inconvenience. Well, I, th I think, to be fair to the banks, one of the difficulties is if you've got five banks leaving a town, obviously some something should be left behind, but getting the coordination between competing banks to the side who's going to run it, who's going to pay for it. That's been hard in the past. And the new rules which have come in deal with that. They've got a powerful new regulator, the FCA, who are going to oversee it. And they give a framework for the banks to work together through my organisation, Link, uh, to make sure that if the last branch goes, all the banks chip in and you get a shared branch which anybody oh, okay. can use because it needs to be accessible to anybody regardless of which bank account you've got. All right, thanks for that, John. John Howells, uh, Chief Executive of the Link Network. All right, uh, coming up, uh, James and Esther.